Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. Google today on Sunday suffered a major outage across parts of its infrastructure. Looks like it lasted about four hours. The result was that Gmail and YouTube, for example, was not reachable, but the outage also affected a number of third party services, like for example, Snapchat and Discord were mentioned in news reports. These services do rely on Google Cloud. The outage appears to be somewhat focused in the eastern United States, uh, but uh, these services were also not reachable for a number of users in California, for example. So far, Google hasn't released any details, but it promised to do so once they finished their investigation. And about a week ago, Siemens published a security announcement regarding its uh, logo 8pm controllers. These are logic controllers that you often find in automation environments and these controllers listen on port 10,005. Turns out they're subject to an unauthenticated configuration override. Also an attacker could use this port to download configuration files from affected devices. At this point there's no patch available for this problem. Seems just recommends that you do not expose port 10005 of these devices to untrusted networks. While it certainly sounds like a severe issue at this point, Shodan, for example, only lists 59 devices listening on this port. We also don't see a lot of scanning on this port, so this is probably more an issue where an attacker would already have a foothold in a network and then laterally move to exposed devices. And we got an interesting blog post outlining a quick method how a malicious Tor exit node may potentially be able to obtain the real IP address of a host connecting through it. Now the fact that exit nodes can manipulate traffic in the Tor network isn't new and uh, really just sort of verifies that even with Tor you probably should still use HTTPS in order to protect uh, the traffic in transit. And the Tor network certainly shouldn't be considered a trusted network. An attacker in this case would wait for a user to send an HTTP request and then the attacker would return a spoofed 301 redirect response. 301, that's a permanent redirect, so the browser will remember that particular URL. If now the user disconnects from the Tor network, tries to go back to that particular site, well, that user will be redirected to the URL that the browser received while connected to the Tor network. If the attacker returned a unique redirect URL, then of course the attacker is now able to obtain the user's IP address because the user is no longer connected to Tor. This of course would uh, work best uh, also if uh, the site that's being poisoned here is a somewhat popular site that the user does access without as well as with Tor. Now Google is mentioned as an example in the post, but of course Google with strict transport layer security would not necessarily be vulnerable to this particular attack. So in general, I don't think it's a big deal, but you definitely should not sort of mix your Tor and non-Tor browsing sessions if you are relying for Tor on privacy. The browser doesn't necessarily know whether or not it's using Tor in this scenario if Tor, like in this example, is implemented using a proxy. And a Twitter post claiming that there is an unpatched vulnerability in the latest version of Engine X did cause a little stir. Now, the vulnerability appears to be real, but it is in the NJS scripting language. NJS is a subset of JavaScript that's delivered with Engine X and allows you to essentially do some server-side scripting in order to get some 
fancier uh, configuration options implemented in Nginx. So I don't really see if uh, this being uh, remotely executable, exploitable. However, if you do have a shared Nginx server and you are allowing users uh, to deploy these NJS scripts, then maybe there is a vulnerability here. No patch at this point. There is a very simple proof of concept available for this vulnerability no actual sort of remote execution or any other uh, vulnerability at this point. The very simple proof of concept exploit is just calling a segmentation fault at this point. Well, and this is it for today. Remember, tomorrow I'll be doing a webcast uh, with SANS at 10.30 a.m. Eastern about new authentication standards. So hope to see some of you there. If not, uh, well, uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.